Hey TCS TV viewers, it's Dave and Evelyn from the Camera Store. And today we're talking about the Panasonic S5 II. Dave and I have just had the opportunity to test out a pre-production Panasonic S5 II. Now we really enjoyed the original S5, but it wasn't the perfect camera. There were certain some limitations to it. Yeah, now the biggest thing that they've put in this Panasonic S5 II is now we have a phase detection autofocus. We're gonna be talking a lot about that today because up until now, both in the Panasonic Lumix G series as well as the S series, we've only had contrast detect autofocus. So we've been able to take it through some of the most Canadian tests <laughs> that we possibly can. We're talking hockey, mm -hmm. we're talking skiing, yep. and just hanging out in the mountains in general, and even some reindeer. So we wanna know if this has really made a big improvement, what's still the same, and what other changes have they made in this new model? Now, when you first get your hands on the S5 II, it looks a lot like the original S5, and that's not Imagine a bad it. thing at all. We do notice it is a slight bit taller, but as far as looks and aesthetics go, it's almost identical. Now, I have to admit, I'm not a huge fan of the styling from Panasonic. They tend mm -hmm. to have the most functional cameras, I find. But yes, it's very <laughs> practical, and I like the layout. I like all the buttons on the top. You have the ISO, white balance, exposure compensation. You have the twin controls. I think they've done a great job with it. And as we were talking with our partner Drew behind mm. the camera today, when you're wearing gloves on a cold day when you're Canadian, you wear them all the time. And so having a camera that has really pronounced buttons and dials and texture to them is very helpful in those conditions. Well, they've maintained the same weather ceiling from the original S5, but they've improved a couple other things. One is the eight-way control on the back here is a much improved feel to it, and they've increased the viewfinder resolution now as well. So we had a 2.36 million dot electronic viewfinder in the S5. Now it's kind of up to where we see the rest of the market, the 3.69 million dot electronic viewfinder. So it's a nice improvement there. This camera also has a full-size HDMI port, and I think all camera manufacturers should be putting a full-size HDMI into their cameras. Yes, Panasonic has done <laughs> good on their ports. We're continuing to see a headphone jack a microphone jack and of course having the headphone jack is great for monitoring your audio we also like that the USB-C port can both power and charge the camera um, making this very versatile it's a great platform to be able to work with for video because of that and we also have four channel audio which is nice to see now the S5 II features the same full frame 24 megapixel sensor found in the S5 but now they've added phase detection to it now it is an image stabilized sensor which is really going to help you out with those sort of suspect shutter speeds and certainly on the video side of things for stabilization I do like that the IBIS in this camera is very aggressive and it's been great. I've got some very low light shots that were salvaged because I had great IBIS in this camera. The other thing is with this new in-body image stabilization, if 24 megapixels isn't cutting it for you for the resolution you need, you, then you can get up to a 96 megapixel image on a tripod with their multi-shot mode. All these are very cool trick features that really make this camera much more versatile. Though now they've added a really trick feature to it. Yes, we have a phase detection array, so we have phase detection autofocus. Yeah, if you've been following the Panasonic Lumix story for you know the last few years, a lot of people have been wanting phase detection autofocus, and they've used their DFD contrast detect system for a long time. It's been okay, they've made improvements with firmware and stuff over the last few years. It still hasn't been phase detection, it doesn't have that tracking ability that a lot of the other manufacturers have really leaned into the last few years. Now phase detect is a big deal and it's very important when it comes to tracking action and working with it. Now I took this camera and a couple lenses to a hockey game. It was a really well lit arena and my experience with it was definitely better than it was with the S5. However, I did find that the autofocus wasn't wowing me. It was definitely an improvement, but I found once it locked on, it was great, but it took a little longer than I would like to for it to lock on. I'd have a subject in the frame, face detect was enabled, it was there, but it took a second for it to actually lock on focus. And once it did, it was very sticky. Now it is a pre-production camera, so yes. I have to you know, you know be forewarned with that. But I did find that experience took a little longer than I would like to focus. Yeah, is, there's some stiff competition. We've tested <laughs> a lot of cameras that have amazing tracking abilities. Now, of course, hockey indoors in an arena, it's a pretty aggressive test. And we've seen a lot of cameras right now just improve con consistently with their autofocus performance. Now you're saying on the still side of things, it wasn't quite as aggressive as you'd like to see. No, I've seen certainly other cameras out there are certainly much more aggressive. Now I'm trying to compare it with its sort of peers or sort of in that same kind of price point. And I do find that there are some better performers when it comes to outright autofocus for sports and action in this sort of league. Now the other thing I had to do was shoot with mechanical shutter because the electronic shutter, which gives us a faster frame rate, had horrible rolling shutter. If you take a look at 
these two shots here as I was panning back and forth with the exact same shutter speed, both mechanical and electronic, you see the massive difference in image quality. Now when it comes to the max burst rate that you can get with electronic shutter, you can get up to 30 frames per second, but as you were saying, it's just not a very fast scanning sensor, and so it's not going to be ideal in that shooting situation. Uh, but if you are shooting with the mechanical, you can get up to 9 frames per second if you're locked on focus, and if you want that continuous tracking, you can shoot up to 7 frames per second. So although we are testing it as kind of being an action camera for still photography, it's probably not going to be your fastest performing camera available in the market. Now, of course, we want to get into some of the video features of this camera because this is where I think the S5 has really kind of sang, made it this content creator <laughs> kind of multi-purpose camera. So we're going to bring Drew on who did some skiing tests with us and we're going to get into some of those features. All right, Drew, we have secretly been filming some stuff with the Panasonic S5 II for a while. And then you also had the chance to take it up to the ski hill to do some samples. What were your impressions of this when you're comparing it to the S5? So my overall impressions of the camera is that it's definitely improved from the S5. The autofocus is actually usable. <laughs> it feels really nice to say that about a Panasonic camera since we've been filming with them for so long. Yeah, well, it's, it's made such a huge improvement. And I know everybody's wanted that phase detection. We've gotten rid of that wobble that was known with this Panasonic using the DFD contrast autofocus system. There was almost a palpable difference between when we were shooting stills and when we were shooting video. I don't know if it's just algorithms or firmware or something like that. Uh, it's really tough to know with just having a pre-production sample of the camera to work with, but it was locking on a lot more aggressively and to the point where for almost all of the ski shots, we kind of had a, uh, a rig. I could barely see it half the time on what I was doing. I was just trying to like guess where the framing was and it did a really good job of keeping focus and picking out things. Now it was a really high contrast situation. Mm -hmm. White snow with, with dark, like, snow, dark suits. snow suits, like blues and reds and stuff like that. So admittedly it was uh, pretty easy. Dave's but, motioning hockey to us oh, as yes, well. You want is. to talk about hockey? <laughs> yeah, because hockey was also really surprising because we noticed it was substantially better when we were shooting video on hockey. It was mm -hmm. locking on relatively, it wasn't perfect. There was still definitely a number of situations where it kind of fell out of focus. It mostly seemed to have problems uh, in the vertical axes and when we were zooming in at the same time. Yeah, now what about in-body image stabilization? I mean, on the ski hill, obviously you're using rig and you push it to the most amount of image yes. stabilization that you could possibly get. <laughs> yeah. And this is what the footage looked like. Honestly, it was really surprising. It's not like a GoPro where it's like doing the horizon stabilization. You can actually still see a lot of the movement and stuff like that, but it looked really smooth and really usable. And really I was, natural. yeah, and I was super impressed. Like there's a huge amount of play in there, especially with the uh, crop formats that we were kind of using. Mm -hmm. One of the things with the Panasonic cameras is we primarily use like a GH6 for our yeah. production. We get a lot of compliments on how that footage looks a lot of the time. Now to make the grading process a little bit easier, we now have some built-in LUT options that just help you with that process. Can you talk about what that is and how that benefits people? Yeah, so the LUT library, essentially it's built-in cube LUTs directly into the system that you can not only preview, but that, that are baked into the footage itself. And yeah, that any, any video person that is currently watching this is gonna hear that and just go, ah, yes, yes, <laughs> yes, please. Yes, yes, please. please. Essentially with logarithmic footage, normally it looks super flat and you have to kind of grade it after the fact. And yes, it's super usable. You get a heck of a lot more dynamic range and stuff, but with the baked in, I can see what it's going to look like with specific LUTs. So if I'm going for a very specific look or anything like that, I can compose, frame, color, expose. I can do everything direct in camera and have it all baked directly into the footage, which is a huge help, especially with log footage, because yeah, that can sometimes take a little bit to grade and, yes. and take care of. And of course, we've been doing a little bit more on like TikTok and Instagram reels. And so it's great to see that you have that vertical video profile as well. So that right away, it will just shoot in that format and you don't even have to worry about flipping it or doing any cropping or transforming when you're doing post-production. Yeah, exactly. Uh, we also really like that this camera has all the ports. We talked about it briefly before about how you have the full HDMI port, headphone jack, microphone jack, and USB-C for charging and powering. And what about the formats, Drew? Do you have enough to work with? How's Panasonic <laughs> treating you on that side? Uh, Panasonic's always very generous with their formats. And one thing I really like that Panasonic always does is they institute almost all of their formats to have no record limit. And especially with this camera, very, very, very good thermal management. So yes. despite the fact that it's still weather sealed, 
they still have an active cooling system. Yeah, there's actually like a fan that's built into it that's pulling the heat away and pushing it through the back of the camera. And they're able to maintain the weather ceiling as well, which is fantastic. Which is good because I may have definitely didn't tumble. <laughs> there might have been all. one or two snow <laughs> wipeouts, but yeah. uh, camera's still intact, still weather sealed. Still we're functions. We're good. Call it a stress test. Um, <laughs> but in regards to formats, uh, there is one kind of weird, interesting thing. So for 4K30, you can do that as a full sensor readout or as a crop and 4k 60 you only have it available uh, on APS-C so full 1.5 crop which is kind of interesting because what I also noticed was with the electronic stabilization when you have the crop formats it doesn't seem to be cropping it anymore so it, I think the stabilization is really only the the electronic stabilization crop in is really only happening when you're shooting on the full sensor readouts no formats are missing and the footage that I'm getting out of this even on the crop is really crisp and still definitely looks absolutely amazing even when compressed on YouTube. Excellent. Now there's one thing that Dave and I feel is missing on this 5 on video and that is no tally lamp. You have a lot of video assist tools on your side but on yes. our side when we're in front of the camera we like having the tally lamp. I'm looking at a tally lamp right now mm -hmm. on our GH6 and I love that and it's too bad they don't have it on this it 5 is. too. But waveform. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, all those things. All of the video assist tools. Honestly, when it comes to video, I don't know if Panasonic's like just putting a lot more focus on video specifically. It kind of feels like they are, which is great mm -hmm. because like I think it's it, where they really shine. It really, it really is. Rec 709 is like what we shoot 90% of the time, and it looks amazing direct mm -hmm. out of camera. And now we actually have autofocus. So like, I'm happy. You're happy. <laughs> Okay, well, we'll see if Dave's happy. We'll bring him back and, and we'll wrap this puppy up. All right, Dave. So we know Drew is very happy on the video <laughs> side of things. As he should be, say, as he should be. It's, a, it's been a big improvement on that side of it. Yeah, and we didn't even talk about, like, for the live streaming stuff that we do, mm. it's another camera that has the plug and play where you're able to just go and live stream and recognize it as a webcam. And so I think it's great to see that these cameras in this full frame kind of mid-range lineup are just becoming, like, these content creator powerhouses. Yeah, what I'm finding is, you know, it's a very capable built camera and for most general purpose needs. It's just great. There's no trouble at all with it. But if you're going to push the extremes, if you're a bird in flight kind of photographer, or those mm -hmm. very aggressive autofocus situations, Action. you're going to find that there's some might be some better options out there as far as the autofocus goes. Maybe I've spoiled myself a little bit by shooting some higher end cameras, but it is a very competent camera when it comes to shooting general purpose kind of stuff. And it certainly can shoot sports in action. You just mm -hmm. have to be aware of its limitations. Right? Yeah, and I think it suits kind of that price point that it is. So right now at launch, we're seeing it at $26.99 Canadian. And I think for what this camera offers, offers a full frame sensor, it's 24 megapixels, and a lot of trick features, as you say, Dave. I, I think it's a solid option, especially in a nice weather sealed body like this. So we're always sort of comparing cameras and is, you know, is this camera more video or more stills oriented? And I think this one is kind of like 60-40 on the video side of things. Yeah, I'd have to agree with that. I think a lot of the features lends itself well to the to the video side, especially just having all those formats, having the improved in-body image stabilization, and just some of the overall refinements that they made, especially with that face <laughs> detection autofocus. I mean, this is such a big headline for them. It has such excellent potential, especially with being able to do firmware updates, improving the algorithms. I think that they have some room to grow, and this is great to see. I think this is a fantastic base camera to get people started with. And if you want to really up your game on the video side of things, it's going to push you. It's going to give you all those options. Absolutely. Now, of course, we want to know, what do you guys think? Did you enjoy our Canadian test? What do you think of the Panasonic Lumix S5 II? Does it check all your boxes? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure you follow us both on Instagram. And if you're new to our channel, please subscribe, hit the notification bell, and we'll catch you again very soon. What could possibly go wrong, right? Oh, <laughs> oh, I knew it was gonna happen. You good? Yeah, totally fine. I just saw I just saw a cloud of snow in this skate boy. Thank you. I nearly as cool.
Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed what you saw and you want to see more, you can check out more of our content by clicking up here. And if you're Canadian and you want to shop local, support the camera store by clicking down here.